Hello everyone, so today I'm going to talk about field validation in Sitecore. Uh, there is two types of field validation to be concerned with. Uh, this is going to be a multi-part uh, series because there's actually more than just two. Uh, but we're going to specifically target two of them in this video. And then we're going to cover uh, other types in later videos. And we're also going to create some videos on how to create your own field validations. This today's course is just going to cover uh, where the field validations are, how do you apply those to items or to fields technically um, on your items uh, or on your templates. And then we're going to cover, you know, the different types of validations that you might want. So to start off, we're going to talk about the two types. So what are the two types? The first one is validations that apply to fields on specific templates. So for example, if you had a title and it its type is going to be a single line text field. If you wanted to add validation to that saying that's required, that would be what is considered field rules. The, the other type of validation, which is called field types, is if you had a single line text field that you wanted to have a spe specific type of validation, I'm not sure what type of validation you would potentially want, but if there was some sort of validation you wanted to apply to that field, it would apply to every single template that uses that field. Uh, so for example, if you had a rich text field, you wanted to say it must have valid HTML on it, for example, or it must have a value, I don't know. You would apply it to the field type, and then that field type would apply to every single template of every single item that you have using that template across your site. So uh, let's go into, into the, the contenter and we're going to show where these these field validators are. Um, so they live inside the system tree, and they live within the settings, and then they're down here at validation rules. So the two types I was just mentioning were field rules, which is the ones that apply to specific fields that are related to specific templates. So you apply it to a title field on a single line text field. That's obviously going to only apply to the items that are created from that template. Um, then there's the field types, which is what I was just speaking of recently, is the if you apply something to maybe a checklist, for example, the checklist would have its own specific uh, validation. So the ones I'm really going to focus on, these are kind of a, a rare scenario because most people don't create uh, custom fields. If you run a to create a custom field, you might find that there's a purpose for this, such as a checklist, you don't want broken links, but not many people do that. So I'm going to focus more on the field rules because this is a more common scenario. Uh, you might be working on a title field, you want to make it required. Uh, you might be working on a title field and you want it to be within 60 characters. And, and you're probably wondering, why would I want to do these validations? Just let content editors enter whatever they want. Well, that, that can create issues. Uh, most uh, CMS platforms, you get a title field, and if they go over a single line or, or two lines, it could end up breaking the, the visual aspects of your web page. So a lot of these rules kind of come in because you want to validate and say, hey, I don't want somebody to type in a 200 character title, which could end up breaking the presentation of that title field. So that's the purpose of validation. And it's not necessarily just presentation. It could also be, um, there could be things that could break. Like you could cause yellow screens of death. Now I would say maybe you didn't develop it correctly because you don't really want to throw yellow screens of death even if a field has the wrong value in it. But there's scenarios uh, potentially that you could have where you want to validate and then say because of that validation, keep them from entering this type of value. I'm going to talk quickly about some of the ones that you see predefined. Like I said, I'd like to do a video here in the future where I'm going to create a new one. Um, but a lot of the things that you're going to need are actually already here. Is email, um, is a percentage, is an integer, uh, is a valid email. You know, samples, max length, min lengths. Uh, there's actually ways to do regex. There's a regex, or that's not it right there. Oh, it's this one. Uh, there's a regex validator. So then you pass in these parameters, which I'll talk about here in a second. You pass in a parameter, and one of the parameters is a, a regex pattern. 
and then you can build all types of validations and that's what I'm kind of going to cover in my next uh, video on that topic. Second, I, what I like to talk, do is talk about these parameters. There's there's one parameter I don't see listed here for this one. Uh, let me see if I can find it listed for one of these other ones. I don't see it listed, but uh, a common one that you're going to see is going to be a result. Result equals a value. The, the result is basically a way to tell the validation engine to give it a type or a level of severity for that validation. So uh, typically you could say, you know, somebody doesn't enter in spaces uh, or no spaces. You could say that's a suggestion or a warning. And therefore somebody could see that there's an error on that, still save and then still publish that content. There's other types of uh, levels of severity on the errors, such as a critical error where it wouldn't let you save it until you make the, the fixes that you need to make. And obviously, there's probably going to be a lot of scenarios where critical errors are the ideal scenario just because you don't want people to get past that step. You want it to actually be kind of like a real validator versus just an, a warning or a, a suggestion is, is kind of a weird validator in my opinion. But... So just keep that in mind. There's different parameters, and depends the parameters you have depend on what type of um, the type that you're using for your your script to validate against. So you could create your own and create your own parameters for those the the validator that you build. And like I said, we're probably going to cover that in a future tutorial. So let's say you've defined some some uh, validators. Now, how do you apply these to your fields? Um, we're going to go down to the templates area down here and we're going to click on sample in this instance i'm on a site core 9 instance that doesn't have any uh, templates to find currently uh, we're just going to click on title so you have this field and, and the way you apply these is typically when you're you're creating t templates and they're creating with fields you're you're actually working outside of the uh, template builder in this this interface on the main uh, template item um, which as a builder has all the fields, etc. But what you want to do to apply to validation is actually go and find that item. So that that template builder actually creates items behind the scenes. Those items are your template fields um, and just represents the, the field is a template field. And then you can add additional settings to that field to apply different uh, various things. So what, some of the things you might apply would be a title, you might apply some help text to this field. Um, but another option you have is you can apply validation. There's validation there and then there's validation down here in this main section called validation rules. So you open up the validation rules and then there's four different types of validations or ways you can show the validation message to your users. Now, typically for me, I like to just select them all because um, if I'm showing a validation message, ideally I'd want the user to see them in all different ways that they can. Now, there might be scenarios where you're actually just going to show a suggestion or a warning, and you might want those to only show in certain specific scenarios. Uh, so just to explain what these four different uh, options are, it, I'll just kind of run down real quick. So the quick action bar is actually a feature I haven't demonstrated here on my channel yet, but it's actually over here on the left of this content area or the content tree. There is a, a quick action bar, which basically means it shows you little icons or symbols to represent things or issues in your, in your content tree. So if I select validation roles, what this does is if there's anything that has uh, validation rules that are returning true, basically meaning, meaning that validation rule fails, then it will show a red dot next to that item. I don't, well, actually there's one right there. Uh, a red dot field from address must contain a value. So I can use by selecting this and saying required, for example, required on a title field, and I select it in this thing, whenever that item has a validation that fails, it will show up with a red dot in the quick action bar. Pretty simple, and like I said, most cases I can think of, you'd always want to show that, so that's the reason I would always select that. The validation button is a little different and probably one of the more useful ones. Um, this is where it actually shows up by 
clicking and validating it by triggering a button. Um, so if you're working on the, let's see, the review tab under the proofing uh, chunk, there is a validation button. This also is, appears in the experience editor as well. So when you click that, it, it kind of does the validation on that item and then it will tell you which one's passed or failed. Um, so if I had a title field that was required and I didn't fill in the value, it would show me a red a uh, little red dot and it will say failed and the what why is it failing but since I don't have any of those set that's why it's not showing so I would say in most cases you'd probably want to see a validation button as well validation bar is also a very common scenario so when you're working on let's see let's say you're working on email on this email uh, item the validation bar is this bar to the right and it's also the if I can find this is this little bar that shows up here so if if you have a validation on the from name uh, field which is a single line it looks like um, if you had a validation that said required and it didn't and somebody didn't come in and fill it in uh, then it would show a little red bar here and it, as well as showing a little red dot over here on the right saying that it's failing validation. So that's pretty much all that is. It's pretty straightforward. The last one, let's go back. The last one is workflow and this is a very, a little bit more challenging to set up, but I would say always turn it on, uh, especially if you ha are, are using some sort of validation that's more required something that should be more should alert the user more then i would say use workflow but there's a little bit more configuration with it typically in your workflow states you would actually define that certain workflows of this type would get triggered and then you'd also have to trigger you'd have to tell this that in that in workflow required is required so it kind of does a link between workflow and essentially if you have it set up to say workflow of this type in the draft to or waiting approval state is required, then it would trigger that that uh, that alert. Whereas otherwise, it could skip it potentially. It really depends. I mean, some of the other ones would also kind of keep it as well. So, I would say in the most most senses, I would check them all. If you're doing actual validation and saying I don't want users to type in X length then select them all and and you should be in a, a good state but there's some rare scenarios that I can't think of off the top of my head where you might not want to really alert the user you just you just want to maybe provide a validation button that just alerts etc just to show a warning or a uh, or a suggestion so uh, that's pretty much it for this course. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out and ask. And like I said, there's going to be some more videos coming up soon on this, the same or similar topics. So uh, keep on the lookout for those. Thank you.